Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. It's really Wednesday. This video comes out on Thursday, Friday, Friday. Gotta fix my podcast setup on Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. If you don't know me, my name is Evan Lopez, and that is a diesel arm right there. God damn, all day, every day, drinking pre workout while I record this episode. If you're watching the video, you get it. Ah, I'm really drinking pre workout. Uh, Got to go to the gym after this because diesel. And uh, I just said, fuck it. You know, let's see what happens if you're sipping uh, pre workout while you do a podcast. So, you know, what could happen? I mean, I'm sure I'll have two or three panic attacks during this. Uh, heart palpitations, possible heart attack, uh, erectile dysfunction, or extra function, if you will. You know? I mean, theoretically, pre-workout should get the blood flowing, you know? Getting everything all diesel down there, if you know what I'm saying. And if you're looking at my drink, I got a mason jar, super hipster, hashtag Pinterest, uh, with a metal straw because California. Um, and I have a little rubber tip giggity on my mason jar. I don't know why. Um, my girl got them and they're just so, they're, it may, I think it's like some nostalgic thing back when we used to suckle on teats as babies. Some of you as children. Some of you, well, yeah, you still do as an adult. But anyway, uh, I think it just, it, it's, it's satisfying. All right, let's get that out of the camera. I saw today that, uh, if you're wondering, Evan, that was an interesting song you're singing. It was terrible. Friday by Re- Rebecca Black. She's back, and she's got a new single, Sweetheart. And you know what? It's a goddamn good song, all right? I think it was a shame what they did to her back in the day when she dropped Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Who was the engineer? Who was the producer who was like, yo, this shit banging, this shit banging. But, you know, kind of like Nick Cannon when he was putting out diss songs towards Eminem, the producer there was like, yeah, this shit's tight, bro. Ugh. So can you hold it? I haven't got that Venmo yet. Can you go and send that over? What I'm saying is you'll produce anything if you're getting paid for it, you know? It had to be something like her. Uh, I guarantee she has relatives in music, and they were like, "Yeah, you come on in, we'll do a song," and then somehow connection to a music video. Like that's the thing is she was, she put out a post, and uh, this is kind of a pet peeve of mine, but I guess it was warranted, you know. And people can express themselves however they want. Hashtag no uh, controversy today, Evan. Okay. People can express themselves however they want on the internet. That is your right as a goddamn blood redded. See, dude. dude. Pre-workout, making me have a goddamn stroke right now. A red-blooded American. Bars. You can express yourself however you want. It's a pet peeve of mine when people take to social media to like, they talk about all the hate and they're like, you know what, you won't stop me. And I get it, it's like motivational. But like sometimes I think people look to have a post like that. Like have you ever seen, and I'll get back on to- on topic, when girls are like, like I've seen silly ones who are like, huh, and people said Latinas couldn't wear pink lipstick and it's like this girl with her like her tits out and she's just got this pink lipstick and she's just like "Mm." and I'm like who the fuck ever said that okay whoever said anything like that people would be like and who said white girls can't have ass and then it's like a picture in a bikini with her ass sticking out and I'm like who are these people who are saying all this stuff I've never met them everybody knows that Starbucks gives bitches asses and I say bitch with all due respect you know But people be getting silly just for an opportunity to like humble brag or to like just flex on social media. You remember that don't judge me challenge? That is like the cringiest thing I've ever seen. I will watch those compilations and just sweat. And I'm like, how are these people in existence that can do these don't judge me challenge things? It's basically, if you don't know what this is, hashtag okay boomer. boomer. Dude, I had a stroke. I had a stroke, you know? I'm just already all tongue twisted. Way too much energy. We need to bring it down for you cool cats. Hashtag no explode. I stick with that old school uh, pre-workout. All that new shit that kids are taking, like Mr. Jekyll kind of shit, gets makes my willy tingle in a bad way. Way too jacked up. I remember I took C4 before. 
never again. And I thought a goddamn beehive was flying around under my skin. I was just like, oh my God, I can't relax right now. Thought I was going to have a heart attack back in the day. Uh, took one called Redline was the name of it. It was this pre-workout mixed drink. I didn't realize the bottle was for four people. I drank the whole shit. Bars. And I start driving. I had to go to a swim meet. I was very tired in college. I don't remember driving. I just remember blinking and I was at the pool. And I was like, oh shit. Uh, we are time jumping in this motherfucker. So I've always just stuck with pre-workout, uh, no explode as my pre-workout. Because I can trust it, you know. But uh, if you don't know what these uh, don't judge me challenge videos are, YouTube them. They're worth a cringe watch, okay? And it's basically, the idea is don't judge people. And it's a challenge. And you think about it, like you're not supposed to judge people on social media and everything. And it's like, okay, the idea behind it is, I understand it. And okay, you're dumb, but you know, it's cool, I guess. And, uh, but what was happening is, you're getting these people who think they're really good looking, uh, putting fake pimples, messing up their hair, making stupid faces. And they would come up to you and they would like, they would be in the camera frame and they would like be looking really stupid. And then they would pull the camera back and they would just be like trying to flex on you. Here's my example of it. Okay. I'm going to get real close for the camera on this one. All right. So here we are. Boom. Don't judge me. Dumb face. Boom. Boom. Then they cover it. And then, and then they just look at you like that. Yeah. And it's like the most conceited, cocky piece of shit thing you could ever do. And I love them. Can't get enough of them. It's my version of watching Cops, where you're like, well, at least I'm not this fucking stupid. I think that's why people like to watch Cops and those kind of shows, because they're just like, well, my life isn't that bad. Uh, I did get a speeding ticket, but my life isn't that bad, because look what this, they just found crack on this person. And they're denying it. They're like, sir, we saw you smoking the crack. I ain't have that crack. That wasn't crack. That was, that was cigarette. They're like, no, that's crack. Mm, it's hemp. You say tomato, I say tomato. People be wildin'. But uh, Rebecca Black posted a thing about her uh, her hate that she received, and of course, with it, she drops like this bombshell picture of her with her her boobies all out and everything. I was trying to think of a funnier word to say than boobies, but that's all that came to me. You know, bars titty balls they were all out all over the place and she's like all the hate i got i wish i could have told blah 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 and blah 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 you know it's always interesting when people use social media and like uh a way to like flex on you but it's hidden in motivation like we already know the whole thing when people just put their picture of an ass with a motivational quote or inspiration it's just like live your life however you want to live it free and wild and it's like a picture of a girl in a bikini and like just peaches booty all out and it's just like you could have just posted the picture you know it's like become such a cliche of like you know dudes do it as well flexing in the gym and it's just like stay on the grind hashtag grind life they call me bad breaks because i'm just always on that grind you know they call me the bench warmer because i don't play Amazon dropping off a package if you could hear that doorbell in the back right now. Hashtag bars. Hashtag Jeff Bezos. All day. In my place. By myself. Oh man, this pre-workout's got me jacked. I'm feeling good right now. I'm gonna go to the gym, do some functional training. I uh, I do uh, jujitsu if you don't know. And it's funny because I came from the boxing world and just, you know, I swam in college and everything, but martial arts way was boxing and uh i was always worried about injuring my body and everything like that cool trash chuck truck just backing up brinks bringing them bars but uh i grew up boxing and everything i was always worried about <clears throat> getting injured in the sense of brain damage uh, my body just the wear and tear i worked mitts for a lot of people over the years there was a point where i was just like running this gym mitts all the time to the point where my fucking arms were were shot my shoulders my elbows tendonitis i thought i was going to get way more injured in boxing than jujitsu uh with life turns out that was a lie because my body's just falling apart in jujitsu and uh 
I'm starting to pull back a little bit to the point where it's like, let's just do this three days a week and we need to cross train during the week. We need to swim. We need to stretch. So today, after this podcast, I'm going to go hit the regular gym, do some stretching, some functional training, uh, strengthen up the tendons, you know, that functional stabilizing power. Yeah. Protect my lower back. Some people say, protect your neck, protect your back, you know? Don't want my back to fall apart. Life, you know? Life will do that to you. Um, But yeah, I felt like with Rebecca Black, she kind of did that with this post where she uh, she was flexing on social media with this post and making it seem like, you know, you know, it's like when people post things and they go, kiss my ass, haters, but they don't have any haters. I feel like that's what a lot of people do on social media, where it's like, you're not going to stop me. Like they make an enemy out of people that aren't really there. And it's a weird thing. It's like, shout out to all the people trying to keep me down. Huh? Well, here comes my era, you know, welcome to the takeover. And it's like, bro, no one is trying to stop you ever. You know, everybody's rooting for you. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe 30% of the time they actually have some people who are like, ah, you can't do that. But I bet 70% a lot of support. It's just I think people don't feel comfortable accepting uh, or being vulnerable enough to just be like, hey, these are my goals and I'm trying to accomplish them. So they need to make like, oh, man, people are, uh, you know, trying to hold me back. Welcome to it. Welcome to the fight, brother. Hashtag the grind. Um, Haters make me famous. Like all that kind of stuff. And I think it's linked to the same thing where people go, so everybody, like you've seen this on YouTube all the time. So everybody's been asking me about my skincare routine. So here you go, guys, when no one has really asked for it uh, and they just want to make a skincare video, just make the skincare video, just put it out there, you know? I, uh, and I fall in trap to that too. When I was doing, you know, putting out music and everything, I'd be insecure. Like, hey, someone keeps asking me, when am I going to drop this video? You're welcome, guys. But it's like, no. It was just, I was nervous, you know? It just turns in, I'm that guy. I'm the one who's putting all these social media posts. Hashtag the grind, you know? Stay woke. But I I think that's one thing that social media is so weird. It's so weird, the things we do and the things we say. If it wasn't for uh, doing stand-up and entertainment and just like i i feel like social media is getting back to a good place where it's not being taken as serious you have to disconnect from it being real life i'm gonna say some weird shit on social media and stuff that i don't really i do think it's funny but it's like this isn't how i really live my life if i say something about wow look how delicious this is baby cow looks i don't really think that baby cow looks delicious i just think it's a funny thing to say And I don't think you should really take social media that serious in the sense like, like, I think it hurts um, people's protests and awareness things when they get so far down that path on social media of all they do is post political protest and are almost like it's just constantly the things they're giving you is hatred. It's just they're so angry and there's just... It's it it tires people out that follow you, you know, when you're constantly just always in your face about the president and just like, uh, it it tires me out. It wears me out. I think it wears out your friends. You know, it's just like when you post about multi level marketing all the time too. You know, I don't I don't I unfriend people who post all all day about their multi level marketing. I'll be honest, you guys can tell me I uh. I legit am talking faster in this podcast. I think it's because of this pre-workout. <sighs> Look how calm and cool I am. Able to take drinks during the podcast. That's one thing I, I am in awe of people doing stand-up is when they're confident and cool enough to just take long drinks in between their jokes. I mean, I guess the longest set I've ever done is 20 minutes, but I still haven't been comfortable enough to stop and take a drink of water. You know, that's one thing. Or even like take a sip of a drink and like, ah, what else? What else? I hate that. 
That's always a funny thing people go to. I've caught myself early on doing that where you're just like, ah, what else? What else? When you're kind of thinking of what your next joke is, I now just soak up the silence. I like it. Let's reset this room, you know, unless it's going bad. And then I want to push through. I want to push through. I did a set last night where, uh, it's funny. Some of the places I'll go, dude, I'll crash music mics. I'll do whatever just to get stage time. If I'm working on something and that's the thing, new stuff can't really do it in a show. I mean, you can stuff it in there a little bit, but it's gotta be kind of good. So you gotta go to mics and you gotta go just do spots, uh, that aren't necessarily paid gigs just to get the reps in. Like you gotta get in state on stage as much as possible. So with new material, I'll go to even like just mics and uh, just work on it. Just getting the craft better, you know. And uh, last night I went to one. And it's funny when I, I go to music mics sometimes, I'll do stand-up. It's a great crowd. But sometimes they're so into like poetry and being respectful. But they they don't know if they should laugh. And then you get a lot of just really smiley faces with no laughter. And it's just weird as a comedian to deal with that. Because you're not getting the feedback you need or you want to like really bring the energy with everything. Everything's so like, (laughs) they start doing that and you're just like, I need more than this. Okay. I'm trying to get turned up right now. Y'all need to get on my level. But it's interesting. It's a challenge to me. I like it. I like uh, having to deal with that where it's like, okay, I need to find a way to turn this room into what I need and command this audience. But, uh, you know, one day at a time, brother, you know, hashtag the grind. That's what I'm working with. But uh, shout out to Rebecca Black doing her thing. Wow. Someone just coughed outside. Very cool. Oh, a sneeze. Bless you. Um, What else were we going to talk about? What else? What else? I just lit- literally, literally did that. Yeah, I had a stroke some at some point during this podcast, I'll be honest with you guys. Or you just find out I'm a robot. This is how you learn it. Nah, nah, I did literally. You just find out I'm one of Elon Musk's robots. That dude is a robot for sure, huh? That shit's all crazy to me, Elon Musk. I uh, I was I was watching the podcast with Joe Rogan and uh, an astronaut that works that left NASA to work with Elon Musk. And it's pretty insane what Elon Musk is doing. And I think in generations to come, he is going to be the most important person so far. He transcends everything, entertainment, uh, politics, just everything for humanity. He's going to be more important than Jesus Christ. There, I said it. You heard it here first. Elon Musk is, is going to be more important than Jesus Christ. Bars. And it's crazy to think about this because I was talking about this with the coronavirus, when everything was, you know, going on with that, when it first was coming out, still going on. uh, I was saying that this is how we get wiped out. It's going to be a disease. It's going to be something like a pneumonia-like disease that just quickly spreads. And the thing about this is kind of crazy. It almost seems manufactured that there's no symptoms for weeks. It's the perfect disease to wipe us out. Because it can be weeks. I think there was like 14 days where you don't see symptoms. So you can be spreading it like that. And then people won't know for two weeks later. That's pretty insane and pretty scary. But uh, instead of talking about that, we're talking about strippers that fell off poles. Hashtag none of my business. Can't even go into that one. Too close, man. Too close. (laughs) Um. But yeah, that was my whole thing was saying like, it's going to be a disease. And the only way we can make it through a disease like that is if we get onto another planet. That's the only way our species makes it. Dinosaurs ruled the world for 300 million years. Think about how much longer that is than us. We're not even a speck of a speck around earth. As long as the dinosaurs, they got wiped out. Why? An asteroid came and they never made, they obviously never made it off earth. We're so much cooler than dinosaurs. In such a small amount of time, we're, we got off Earth, bitch. We win, dinosaurs. You lose, okay? You think you're some cool lizard thing? You were a goddamn bird, okay? Everybody tries to act like Jurassic Park was real and they're 
these dope ass lizards. Now you all were just birds squawking, running around. You had feathers. You had feathers and you couldn't even fly off the planet. Hmm. But um, that's the thing. The solar system, the sun is going to eventually burn out. Not in our lifetime, not our kids' lifetime. We got plenty of time. But for our species to survive, all we got to do is we got to get to Mars. That's all we got to do. If we get to Mars and we can actually start living there and we have our species on multiple planets, we're good, baby. We're good. I think... I think that's when Star Wars becomes a thing. And it makes sense, right? Like we're just in an infant state of uh, what our species could become. And we just haven't made it off the planet yet. If you think about it, like the bigger bigger picture of how long we've been on Earth. And like we started in a little cave. You know, maybe we were the monkeys in the tree, came down, ate psilocybin mushrooms, started to stand upright, which the stoned ape theory. That whole little area whatever mile radius that people used to live in, they had no idea what the rest of the world was. To even leave a continent was a mind-blowing thought. We've just evolved to where that is nothing. We can, we can fly across the country and, or across the world. And it's like, that was something we never could do. And it seems normal. I fly into New York today. Boom. That that would be mind-blowing to the, to the cavemen. If you just took them and dropped them down, they're like, wait, you fly from here. The gods take you to another part of the world. What? There is another part of the world. You can actually leave it and look at the entire thing. You're a god. That's what they would think. If you went back in time with a goddamn smartphone, you would be a goddamn wizard. We are wizards. We have this device that we hold can tell you any answer in the world. And most people are just looking at it while they jack off. Isn't that kind of crazy? Like we have all this information and power and we just use it to jack off and look at titty balls. Bars. Titty ball bars, you know? But before I lose this thought completely from the pre-workout, um, there'll be a day where going from Mars to Earth is going to be normal. It's obviously going to be crazy for years and there's going to be some bugs, trust me. There's going to be some people that blow up on the way out, you know? That's going to be nuts because there'll be civil wars. There'll be Martians versus Earth, you know, different rights, different resources, you know, different things like, you know, look, Puerto Rico, you know, my motherland, my motherland is part of the United States. But because it's so detached, um, a lot of people don't look at it with resources and helping it. You know, hashtag no political, no controversy, Evan. Um, they don't look at it as part of the United States. Why? Because it's literally not part of the United States. Can you imagine once we have a colony on Mars and then uh, we need to send them resources and everything? Someone on Earth is going to be like, no, fuck them. They left. They're Martians. They're not our problem anymore. Oh, they're getting hit by asteroid fields? Oh, well, maybe you shouldn't have left the earth okay you goddamn space cowboy deal with the repercussions of your actions that's how people are gonna be and then they're gonna be like oh yeah cool and they're gonna throw a rock from mars um and it's gonna hit earth like you'll be able to do that one day that'll be kind of crazy when we start like weaponizing asteroids it's gonna happen if we go to earth we're gonna be like why don't we use this shit to our advantage, kind of like we took horses and we're like, let's ride them shits, you know, yeehaw, we're going to do that with asteroids for sure, because why not, it's there, we didn't develop something, and we're going to weaponize asteroids, 100%, we're going to take out other planets like that, it's going to be crazy, we're going to live Star Wars without the Jedi, um, or who knows, maybe we will have Jedi, you know, we don't know. We don't know. This is going to be a crazy thing where it's like different nationalities, you know, whether you have a light skin, dark skin, you know, Asian. When people saw other people for the first time, they're like, what? You kind of look like me, but kind of different. But uh, we're going to get in space and there's going to be other people probably, right? I mean, what if like the Aztecs and everything like that, they defected and went to space? All the shit we couldn't... Uh, understand they just cleaned it up swept things under the rugs they're already out there they're the aliens they're coming back 
We really went down a rabbit hole. But shout out to Elon Musk. I'm excited. I don't know if I would uh, defect and go to Mars. You would be kind of on the cutting edge. But it's, I don't think it's as cool as Earth at all. You know, we got we got oceans. We got uh, mountains. We got the snow. We're pretty established here. You don't really want to start over. Um, it's like the desert. It's like Utah, you know. I'm uh, I'm originally from the desert, from the Antelope Valley. Shout out to all my other little desert rats. Um, I went on a trip to Utah. It was cool. It was cool. You know, I got to see some cool landmarks in Zion and hang out with some great friends. After a while, I'm like, it's just desert. It's red rock. It literally looks like Mars looks like Utah without the mountains. There's no deer. Nothing I could take pictures of. And for the most part, you're just going to be living on, uh, you know, Mars, rocks, and you're going to be in these facilities. It's not going to be cool. You're not going to be exploring. You're going to be like taking dirt samples and shit and gardening. I don't know if Elon Musk is there. I'll be there if Elon Musk is there. I'm like, hey, you got to commit to this. If you commit to it, I'll hang out here. That's the only way. Fuck going to space. I'll visit. Once they have it ready for visitors, I'll be there. Yeah, that'll be good. What else we got going on? I can't believe I keep saying that. What else? What else? Um, Man, that was all off of Rebecca Black. That was all. That's what I like to call one shot. Where I just go in without topics. Boom. One shot. Just like the movie 1917. I found out yesterday. That movie only had like three cuts in it. Mind-boggling mind-boggling if you haven't seen uh 1917 holy shit you gotta watch it uh just for the fact of what they accomplished it's a cinematography uh tingling willy all right it'll make your willy tingle in a cinematography sense i definitely have a speech impediment from this pre-workout this is wild um but i already talked about 1917 in the last podcast Go back, listen. It's a great movie. I loved it. Um, I saw Disneyland. Disneyland just raised, I talked about them last episode too. They just raised their prices over $200. It's going to set you back $200 to go visit Disneyland. What the fuck? Insane. And it's all because of this goddamn Star Wars uh, ride, which I just found out 30 minutes long. I don't know if that's true or not. I didn't fact check it. 30 minutes long. Maybe 20. Anything over 5 is insane for a ride, right? 10 minutes? That's mind-boggling. 15? Wild. But I do want to go... Uh, I do want to ride it. And uh, it's insane to me that that's really how much it's been raised, the price. How much do you need Disneyland? Okay? Okay. And I know I told you guys about their, the way they do it is based off of park attendance. So if there's too many people there, they got to raise the prices. They're trying to keep people out. What an insane problem to have. They're like, we got too many. We got to keep bumping up the price. That's insane to me. I think it really is. They're just trying to keep the riffraff out. You know, they're just like, Ooh, we got way too many minorities in here. You know? A little too much riffraff. It's fucked up Disneyland. I didn't say it. Disneyland did. But how much money is enough? Really? Like, you know, people can deal with the lines. Like, what are you worried? Like, you're worried that if you don't raise the price, that people are going to experience longer lines. And they're not going to like it. But if they don't like it, they won't come back. And then if they don't come back, uh, there'll be less people there. So it fixes the problem without having to do this fake front of we're doing it for park attendance. Because guess what? Those people that are willing to wait in the lines because they like the ride so much, they're the kind of fans you want. They're the kind of people you want in there because they're there for the experience and they're willing to sacrifice. You really want more bougie ass people that are like, ugh, this line is too long, peasant. We won't be back until the price is $4,000 a ticket. Hmm. Do yourself a favor. Leave the prices low and let the people who are willing to wait in the line wait it out. No pun intended. 
you're gonna make some more diehards. You already got, you guys already got enough diehards. So you need me telling you how to run your business. Your goddamn Walt Disney. You guys still let Jews in there? You know, you guys don't like Jewish people. Walt Disney, do some research. I like Jews. One of my best friends is Jewish. Hashtag Mikey Schwartz. Shout out. I know you're listening. Loyal fan. He thought I was talking about him too with the vegans. I wasn't talking about you. And you know what? You eat chicken wings. Whenever you come visit, I make you burger, steak, and chicken wings. So don't even try getting at me with that vegan shit. <sighs> getting fired up because there's no explode. People think I'm talking about them in a podcast. Then people tell me I can't talk about certain things on the podcast. Because their family's involved in it, you know? I'm missing out on some great podcast content because I can't go into certain things. Things I do for friends. <sighs> Disneyland. Raising your prices. I got to get that SoCal ticket thing before they get rid of that. Disneyland is like Bernie Sanders. They're like, I am once again, I am once again asking for your financial help. How much money does Bernie Sanders have? Like, that's the thing is you're... You're trying to tell us you're going to give more money back to us and you're going to take from the rich and give to the poor. You're getting the money from the poor. Don't ask us for financial help. If you want, if Bernie Sanders wants my vote, I am once again here giving you $20 to show you I'm, I mean business. You can't run your campaign and be like, hey, I need your money so I can get you money. <laughs> what? That's like the people who are like, hey, bro, let me, let me hold $100 for you in two weeks. I'm going to give you 300 back. You've seen those scams run on social media. People be like, yo, I got this investment thing. Give me $500 in three days. It'll be 800. So you'll make 300. I'm like, well, why do you need my money? If you're making this money, why do you need my money to do it with? It's just the name of the game, baby. Mm. I see, that's tough for me. Why don't I give you $5 and you turn it into $8 and then we'll see what happens. Just scale it. Okay, I need to make sure. Or I'll give you $5 now, you turn it to $8. Next week, I'll give you the $8. You turn it into 12 follow, follow, boom. You know? I'd be good with that. I'd be good with that. I had a, uh, I had a dream last night about uh, I was hanging out with Rev Run's kids. You know? You remember that show? Whose house? Run's house. I was hanging out with his kids. And it was such a weird dream because we were just in the back of like a a road trip fan and we were just hanging out and we were singing that song and we were just talking about it. It was so weird. It's one of those weird dreams. You wake up and you're just like, what? What happened? Dude, dreams are weird like that. I like, uh, people interpret dreams weird, but I always hate the dreams where you just can't run and you're like just being chased and you're trying to run, but your feet just keep lifting up off the ground. You're just like, mm, can't go anywhere or you're just stuck and you keep falling and people uh that was the worst uh gives me anxiety just thinking about that actually it's probably the uh the uh pre-workout give me anxiety right now i'm so amped up so amped up i remember one time i had a dream that uh i was a little kid i had a dream that i went in my room and there was candles throughout my entire room and i was sleeping on the bunk bed and my brother sean below me i slept on the top bunk hashtag bars and uh candles everywhere we're talking hundreds of candles in a single room and uh, all through the hallway and on my bed is a goddamn mountain lion and it's the most ferocious looking mountain lion ever and i remember i turn around to run out the mountain lion jumps onto my dresser and i'm trying to run and i'm doing that thing where i can't really run I make it down the stairs or on the stairs, entire stairs covered in candles. The mountain lion's right behind me and I can't run fast or anything. I remember I go downstairs, the entire house covered in candles. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on right now? And uh, I look back, the mountain lion's chasing me. It goes to pounce on me and I cover myself up like, ah, all of a sudden I blink and I'm outside. The rest of my family is eating dinner at the dinner table. I can see them through the window. It's pitch black everywhere else except the family room where everybody's eating dinner. They're laughing, having a great time. All of a sudden, this little small dog, like Benji, if you ever saw that show, Benji or movie, 
It's running around me, sprinting as fast as it can, jumping off the hills and shit, super fast. As it's jumping, candles are appearing all over the backyard, and I can't even stand up for some reason. Every time it jumps like over me, I get weaker, and I can't really move, and to the point where I'm just trying to crawl uh, to the dining room window where I can see my family laughing, having a gay old time, and I'm just trying to get there, just army crawling over them, and all of a sudden, I wake up, and I was in bed, pissed myself. Hashtag dream bars. Yeah. I was, a, I was a wee little lad, no pun intended. Uh, but yeah, and I blame it on the candles, you know? That's a scary-ass dream. I remember one time when I was a little kid, I had a dream. I was peeing in my dream, woke up, pissed myself. I'm not ashamed of it. I am who I am. One time when I was a little kid, I was probably like five or six, my mom was cleaning the bathroom. I was in my bed, pissed myself. I was awake. But I knew she was in the bathroom cleaning it. I couldn't get in there. Pissed myself. Felt like it. Inconvenient to get up. That's the great thing about when you're a little kid. No repercussions for doing something like that. Yeah. I mean, I did have repercussions. I got in trouble and everything. And I only did that once in my life. I only intentionally pissed myself once in my life. I remember one time when I was in Chuck E. Cheese as a little kid. I uh, was racing through. I got lost in that maze thing. And when you're a little kid, and I'm talking young, young, like five or six, maybe seven, and uh, racing through that maze thing with all the windows, you think it's ginormous. You think it's the size of Africa. I was running through there, and I got lost. And uh, my brother Sean was in there with me, and I was like, I got to go pee really bad. And uh, he was like, okay, go find the exit, everything. And then I remember I was trying to find it. I could see like, you know, you, you go to a little window, you can look out. I couldn't find the exit. And I remember I'm sitting there sad and I'm just like getting like, I probably looked like I was scared because I knew I had to go to the bathroom really bad. And this kid goes, hey, what's wrong? And I go, I got to pee really bad and I got to get out of here. He goes, follow me. And he goes full uh, military mode. He might've been like a baby Jocko Willink. He was just like, follow me. And he starts racing through faster than Rafiki going through the jungle when he told Simba to follow him and I can't keep up. So I'm trying to keep after him and everything. Kids are like knocking me and I'm running and I lose him. I lose him somewhere in there. And then as I'm like, I get to this, like, you know, a dead end, I look out and I'm in like the little circle that you can see out everybody. I see my family and the rest of like the birthday party. It was like my cousin's birthday. And I just start piss myself. Couldn't stop at that point, you know? But I think other than Hoover Dam, if you haven't heard about Hoover Dam, uh, that's when I was a little kid, shit myself. If you haven't heard that story, go on YouTube, type in Evan Lopez, story time, Hoover Dam. Uh, you'll hear all about that story. It was insane. Wasn't my fault that I shit myself. Okay? Wasn't my fault. That one wasn't on me. Me just doing it in my bed when I was a little kid because I didn't want to go up, go to the other bathroom. Pissed myself. My fault. Chuck E. Cheese, mm, not really my fault. I don't know. You know, maybe I could have planned things better, but it is what it is at this point. Yeah, but, you know, that's life. I'm so glad that doesn't happen anymore. Whew, that'd be rough. That would be rough. That was the worst when you were a little kid. I didn't do many sleepovers, but when you're a little kid, and you just have that fear right before you're about to go to sleep at your friend's house. You're just fucking loaded up on Coca-Cola and all these shits. And you're just like going to bed. You're like, last thought of the night. Hope I don't piss myself. Going to be a weird story to have to explain that to Benny. Why his mom's changing my uh, my bed right now. I uh, In college, we'll end on this one. What the fuck, dude? We're just admitting all this shit. Hashtag no explode is what it does to you. When I was in college, pissed myself. Yeah. Got super uh, drunk, if you will. I think that's the proper American term. Uh, hashtag why I don't drink anymore. Hashtag incredible Hulk. I would just go way too hard. And I remember I was in my buddy's bed. Hashtag no homo. Um, kind of homo. We were in boxers. Uh, yeah, this is really homo actually now that I think about it, which is no issue with me. Hashtag no controversy, Evan. I respect everybody. Um, 
got really, really drunk, went in his bed, uh, fell asleep, woke up in the morning, pissed myself. And what makes it worse, the flap on my boxers came out, fire hydrant hose got out of control, pissed everywhere. But he had to tell, I, I literally wake up and I go, dude, I wasn't even embarrassed. Like I was ashamed. I was just like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, bro, pissed myself. His mom had to change the comforter. That's what made it worse is I was home for summer and I was at a buddy's house. Pissed myself. Just great. Just great. You know? Good times. Good times, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, some speed topics that we're going to talk about before I end this because uh, I didn't really get to them. We're so stupid as a species and I can't really defend myself at all because I just told you all those stories, but it's been a long time since I pissed myself, you know? But this broom phenomenon, people were losing their mind. Isn't it crazy? Like people were saying, it's NASA, it's the, the gravity pull and everything, and it, it's only once a year this can happen. And then you find out, no, you can do that with brooms because the bristles are strong. There was no gravity pull. Everybody who posted it were like, look at the science. Shame on you, okay? Shame on you, but I still love you. I was going to get into the Jussie Smollett stuff or Juicy Smollett stuff about him being indicted. He's going to jail. Jussie Smollett going to jail for that hoax. And you know what? Good. Good. Because you know what? You can't do that. You cannot do that. You cannot try to ignite some hate crime, some fueled political hoax for attention oh man that's no bueno that's like amber heard you heard when she's trying to you know like entrap johnny depp hashtag free johnny it's just no good it's just no good kind of like the elevated heart palpitations i'm having right now from this pre-workout no good so it's wednesday right now this will release thursday maybe you'll listen to it on friday friday gonna listen to it on friday but no matter what if you haven't yet uh subscribe follow me on instagram i am evan lopez if you leave me a review on uh, itunes it helps me uh the audience is growing every episode and it's actually pretty amazing and because i can see the stats and everything so excited uh that it's actually it's really happening you know and we're uh, we're going hard and uh at the end of the day, just know I love you.